Anyway, okay, so here's what we're here's what we're on about tonight, everybody. Here's what we're doing. We're gonna look at the first few, uh, the last few, what's the correct words, the last few previews for uh, Outlaws at Thunder Junction. Big scores, just a couple more uh, standard legal cards to look at. But there's also a bunch of Commander previews from today, and I pulled like six of those that I really really like, and I just want to kind of stare at those for a minute and talk about them. And then when we're done with that, we're gonna look at five six really cards that I think get a little bit better. When this Outlaws of Thunder Junction set comes out, these are cards that were already in standard that I think stand to benefit in some way or another. And these are kind of weird picks, honestly. And then finally, tonight on stream, or well, almost, we're going to be looking at cards that are Outlaws. These are all the existing cards in standard before the set came out that uh, fit the Outlaw subtype. And we're going to kind of run through those and rank them and have a lot of fun doing that. And then after that, we're going to do WrestleMania previews. Good night on stream tonight, so let's go ahead and get it started by opening the hold folder and looking at Territory Forge, our first uh, spoiler that's standard legal from today. I guess it's really a preview if you want to get very technical. And some people in the comments section do. This is five mana, four and a red for an artifact. When it ETBs, if you cast it, exile, target artifact or land. And Territory Forge has all the activated abilities of the exiled card. Uh, it's not good. This is probably the worst card in big score. Unless... You're able to catch something really juicy in your net, <laughs> you know, and on the commander table, you might be able to, to do just that. So if you catch a nice big old artifact, I'm just going to try and work in Portal to Phyrexia in every single spoiler video this season. So I guess I guess if you have a Portal to Phyrexia on the other side of the table, or maybe if your opponent has a Nykthos in commander or a <laughs> guy's cradle or something like that, you know, it's just... Snatch it up. They don't have theirs anymore. Now you have theirs. This card cost you probably 50 cent before the smoke when it's all said and done, you know, <laughs> and their cradle cost them hundreds of dollars. So I guess if you can do that, go ahead and knock it off your bucket list. But I'm not really too excited about this card. I wish I had so much more to say about it. I mean, like, maybe there is more in standard to do with it. Steal your Plaza of Heroes, cowboy. But like, so it costs you five mana to steal. A zero mana play. I'm just going to sacrifice my plaza in response if I have something to target with it. Who cares? I just don't think this card's very good, and I think that's kind of obvious to the majority of people who are going to read it. But there's obviously some splashy plays in Commander, so I guess we should bring that up. Most of the cards we're going to look at in this portion of the video and stream are for Commander. I don't know why this one also has to be, but it's it's a big score. <laughs> so Let's look at Fomori Vault. Another sort of Commander card that I actually think might have some real relevance in other formats for more evolved to land that taps for a colorless you can pay three tap it and discard a card to look at the top x cards of your library where x is the number of artifacts you control put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order card is good <laughs> card looks really good man you don't have to sacrifice it to use the ability you can do the ability anytime you want to it's Artifacts you control, this could have very easily been non-token artifacts, but it just isn't, so... Card Slaps, really, really good magic card here. I mean, I know it costs four mana to use the ability in total, because, you know, you're tapping four lands to do it, whatever. Um, something that could have otherwise been a mana source. But altogether, uh, I don't care. There's <laughs> a lot of really good artifacts in this set, and it's standard. There's a bunch of creatures that make artifacts. Your Epicures, your Harvesters, Blood Tithe Harvesters. Your Novice Inspectors, your Spyglass Sirens. You can go on and on with this. A lot of relevant artifact-making creatures in standard. And a lot of relevant artifacts if you want to play like Subterranean Schooner, Urbras Forge, and beyond, because there's a bunch of really good artifacts in this set, actually, so... I'm thinking Thousand Moon Smithy looks better every day. A little uh, teaser, a little spoiler for the next portion of tonight's stream. But um, aside from just Thousand Moon Smithy, this just looks pretty freaking phenomenal. It even goes pretty well as like a one of in control because you'll have, you know, map tokens from Restless Anchorage. You'll have might tokens from Mirex. So occasionally this can tap to look at the top two or three cards of your library like fairly easily. You'll have an incubator token out in control from your Sunfall. So... Might just be good as a one-of there, honestly, for a card advantage. I think that this thing is kind of juiced and ridiculous and better than it might look at first glance, but I think that uh, you shouldn't have to look at it too many times to realize that it's a pretty good card. It makes sense this is the last card they show us because I think it might end up being one of the more relevant cards in the set. What do you guys think? Seems pretty good. Yeah, activation is high, but again, I, just, I find myself not caring, especially for the decks. They're going to want it. I think that control example is too good. 
And just being a one of in control decks that occasionally looks at a, the top three, you know, anticipates for four <laughs> mana. Um, you know, that's not that great. But <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Search for Azkanta, if you set it up correctly. Um, but, you know, it's not as good as Search for Azkanta. I'll say that much, but it's still, you know, it's going to look at three cards more than you think. And in certain decks, uh, control decks and such, I think that's going to be sort of a, like a hidden home for this card. You think it's just supposed to be in the deck you just cram full of artifacts. But again, I think there's multiple decks that might want this. And, you know, there's also the artifact decks, you know, Zoetic Glyph and stuff like that. They usually have four or five artifacts out, <laughs> whatever. So I think this card could go pretty well in there for like finding stuff late game, recovering from sweepers, getting card advantage against control, whatever. So really, I think relevant card here before it's all said and done. But let's see what else there is to see. Again, I wish I had more to say about this particular card. I just think the card's really good. I almost think that it's... What's the word I'm looking for? I almost think that it's self-evidently good. Um, and, and not necessarily one that I have to convince you about. I see a couple people in chat right now who are like, eh. But mm, <laughs> I think it's going to be worst in the decks that it looks best in. Right? Mostly because those decks are already kind of bad. And as good as I want those decks to be, I'm not sure realistically they ever will be. Um, they might have to wait on rotation or something like that, but decks like Thousand Moon Smithy and decks that are really dependent on the number of artifacts you have in play, there are a number of artifact aggro builds that are really kind of on the cusp right now. They need some help, and I think that this card does help them, but again, I don't think it necessarily brings them up to the level they need to be. I hope I'm wrong on that, but in the decks that you wouldn't think it goes in, like those Azorius Control decks, I think that's what's going to push the card into playability. I really do. So, you just incidentally have four artifacts out. Trust me, it happens. But yeah, it only gets you one card, but so. So. Okay. Fine. <laughs> you know, um, I think things like EOT Memory Deluge, right? Those are just better plays, but those aren't always going to be available to you. This is available to you every single turn. Your opponent might take advantage of the fact that you went shields down, but you're already going shields down and control most of the time EOT to... Uh, Tap down Mirex, right? So I guess you could say this contends with Mirex in the, you know, spend mana on me EOT kind of department. But, you know, you go a couple of turns activating Mirex. You got a map token out. You got an incubator token. And suddenly you're impulsing. You're impulsing every turn EOT. And, like, that's just really hard to keep up with. I think it's pretty good. Let's look next. <laughs> My favorite cards from the commander set. Let me know in the comments section of the YouTube video, by the way, how you feel about it. I think that card is really good. Bounty board up next, though. This is three mana for an artifact. Taps for a mana of any color, so it's just a rock, right? But you can also pay one and tap it to put a bounty counter on target creature. Activate only as a sorcery. Whenever a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, each of its controller's opponents draws a card and gains two life. That's just pretty cool right there. I like it. It's a one. It's a three mana rock, so at least it does that for you. But I also like the use of bounty counters here. It's actually not the first time we've seen these, but also really like the bounty everyone actually ends up collecting. So neat, neat little card. There are a bunch of neat little cards today, but that's mostly what these next few cards are going to be. Um, I didn't want to look at every card from Commander, and I know a lot of people in my audience aren't going to care anyway. But every now and again, just as a Magic player, you see a card and you're like, "Oh, that's cool." <laughs> You know, these are kind of the cards from the Commander product that made me feel that way today. And I thought that other players might be kind of interested. Whether you play, play the odd game of Commander or whatever, or you're building cubes. This might be a fun, like, cube card if you're playing multiplayer cubes. But moving on, let's look at one of the Commanders from today. It's Kiri, Talented Sprout. I really like this card. Four mana, one and Naya colors. A red, a green, and a white for a 0-3 Legendary Plant Druid. Other plants and tree folk you control get plus two plus zero. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, return target plant, tree folk, or land card from your graveyard to your hand. Super duper sick. So you get value out of this the turn it comes into play in multiple ways, anthem effect, and some card advantage, some card selection really. Out of your yard. It's not quite reanimation, but you know, again, it's it's cards. <laughs> it's always super great. There's a number of binnable plants and tree folk, obviously, an insidious roots deck. 
um, might want to, you know, bend stuff. But this isn't quite in those colors, obviously. I'm just thinking kind of casually at this point. But there are tree folk and plants that care about going into the graveyard and then like, you pop them back with this thing. But it's mostly just value. What I like about this the most, though, and what maybe you want to point it out, is that I like that it's an anthem effect for plants and tree folk. I, I, I kind of just like getting support for the tree folk type. That's fine. And plant support is fine, too. We've really seen a lot of plants in this set and here lately. So I just like when, like, different creature types get more support than they already had. So tree folk commander, if you didn't already have one, there's a couple. But if you wanted a different tree folk commander, you got a pretty good one here. It's just a sweet card. Um, and obviously, this second ability is pretty good, too. <laughs> more than pretty good. Yeah, four mana gets bolted. Yeah, that's true. How did how did Voha get Ward and not this guy? Ah, oh, it's a good point, especially considering it's Naya too. Like, why would you play one and not the other? I like Tree Folk a lot. I'm gonna try to make it work. It would suck when you swing in with all your you know bulked up Tree Folk, and they just bolt this guy after blocks, and suddenly you suck. Sucks to suck. So let's move on to Smirking Spelljacker here. Five mana, four and a blue for a 3-3 three, three gen wizard rogue with flash and flying. When it enters the battlefield, exile target spell an opponent controls. Whenever smirking spelljacker attacks, if a card is exiled with it, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. You can't, I can't get through this card without... This is one of the most evil cards they've printed in a really long time. I think that this um, is very, just completely busted. Um, they tried to make it five mana and like price it out a little bit, but like, this is, am I, am I wrong? Commander players? We got commander players in the house right now. Am I wrong in thinking that this is, um, annoyingly busted? <laughs> am I just, am I being silly on this one? Uh, I could, I could, maybe you never actually get a chance to cast the spell. It doesn't have to do combat damage, but you know, they might have a couple of turn cycles to uh, you know, a couple of opponents' turns and then yours to actually kill this thing before you get to cast the spell. So I'm not sure how often you get to cast the spell, but just like as a three-three flash flying body exile a spell, exile is relevant, right? Um, that's kind of good. And then I think if it ever does just get cast the spell, like it's uh, it's kind of unbelievable, right? So it's good. Oh, thanks for the raid, Min Wins. Appreciate you, everybody. Go check out Min Wins. Thanks for the raid, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, so so this is this is be playing legacy. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think they I think that's what the five men is really for is to price it out of like, you know, eternal format play. Um because I'm not sure about that. But in commander, right? Like whoo, goes in my Jeff Goldblum EDH deck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Buds, thanks for the prime sub, by the way. It's two months of prime subage. It's hard to get that second month sometimes. So I <laughs> really thank you, dude. It looks strong, dude. I think it looks pretty strong. I just, uh, five mana, right? That's the, that's the only drawback. They made the only drawback five mana, but good Lord. There's a reason to play a card where someone's wearing a cowboy hat. They also kind of made it, um, they, they, they titled it in such a way that they can reprint it later in a different set with different art. So I kind of like that about it. <laughs> Let's move on. To Thunderclap Drake. That's what them thighs do. Two mana, one and a blue for a 2-1 Drake with flying. Instants and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. I'm sold. You can also pay two and a blue and sacrifice the Drake whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn. Copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Hey, commander players, can I get you again? Can I get you for a second? Is this card ridiculous? I'm pretty sure this card is ridiculous, right? What's stopping this card from being the dumbest card ever printed? some things um i just think this first line of text is obviously very good i'm um, just baseline two mana two one flyer okay stats instance and sorcery spells you cost one less to cast okay that seems great and then this this is ridiculous right this activated ability is dangerous right it's stupid right this is a dangerous activated ability um this is insane yeah broken yeah, people are those are much stronger opinions than I saw about the last card I was talking about. Yeah, it is. So I'm not crazy. Good. I have some card evaluation skills left in my brain. <laughs> the holes in my brain. There's still there's still some in there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this is just... Um, this is really strong. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had more stuff to say about it. 
Um, it does seem like the, the later the game goes, the better it is. And if you have cast your two or three mana commander like three times, you just get to win the game when you do this. Depending on what you're casting next, like it's butterballs. Like, it's unbelievable. <laughs> There's another one where it's like the stronger a card is, the wish I had, the more I wish I had like stuff to say about it. Because like this, the more a card is self-evidently strong, the more I'm like, look at this card. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dev, it is. Um, the stuff this sets up is probably just, like, nuts. Yeah, trust me, there's spooky stuff on the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, this card seems like an ill portent. A bad omen, <laughs> you know. And yes, adding it to the Drake family is very good. I can also, there's a long-time supporter, uh, Barry Drake. I'm always looking to call him different stuff, like Barry Crackling Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Azure Drake, stuff like that. So now I get to call him Barry Thunderclap Drake. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's kind of nice. <laughs> we talked about Barry's been here a bunch of times on stream. Sometimes if you say his name, he appears. <laughs> anyway, card is just dumb. Card is absolutely apple. Apple pie. It's a good card. Good card right there, baby. Um, but <laughs> another card I want to talk about. It's Tower Winder. My goodness. Two mana, one and a green for a 1-1 one, one snake with reach and death touch. When it ETBs, search your library and or graveyard for a card named Command Tower. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Search your library this way. Shuffle. <laughs> Just goes and gets your Command Tower. Literally every Commander deck ever has a copy of Command Tower in it. There is no reason not to run Command Tower in your Commander deck. If you're not doing that, I don't know. You're probably doing something really, really weird. But, um, <laughs> yeah. This card's so good. <laughs> this card, yeah, I see people going like, um, okay, lol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of a weird one. Um, there's a lot of good things about this. Yeah, somebody just pointed out it's monocolored. And that's great. It's really good. Um, because it can fit in a whole bunch of decks. This is, uh, nuts. Like, it, it's like Secure Tribe Elder. <laughs> just like, we already played two mana guys that go and get a land, but like elder puts it onto the table. Right. Um, this is more like a, what's his Sylvan something. I don't know. There's a two mana guy <laughs> that goes and gets a land and puts it in your hand. Um, Sylvan guide. I don't remember what it's called. I don't play it that much anymore. He's supposed to be a mono green cube, but I don't remember his name, but he see, saw a little play at one. There's a time. <laughs> so, I don't know. Just go and grab like potentially the most relevant, or, you know, one of the top three lands in your deck is good. And then it trades with anything. <laughs> Reach and Death Touch. Excellent. Just oh, excellent card. Yeah, put it in mono green. <laughs> Go get your command tower. It's still a 1 1 Reach Death, Reach Death Touch. Could be worse. <laughs> it really could be worse. I like this guy. I also do like the sort of coral snake build <laughs> the artist went with. Good job. Kakai? Kakai Kotaki. That's a good name. Next and finally, I believe, we have We Ride at Dawn. Uh, these cards are in no particular order, to be honest. They're just kind of the order they fill in alphabetically. Three mana, two and a white for an enchantment. Legendary creature spells you cast have Convoke. Legendary creature spells you cast have Convoke. Your creatures can help cast the spells. Whenever your commander attacks, create a 1-1 red mercenary creature token with the thing mercenaries do. My God. <laughs> this, what? So it's at least your commander, right? But like, you're going to have a bunch more legendary dudes in your deck most of the time. I sure do. I mean, like, LSO Core Commander deck has a bunch of legendary critters in it. So this seems very good, especially in like Joda. Which is in standard, but you can't play this in standard. But you play Joda and Commander. Anything that cares about legends, C say and stuff like that. Um, this just seems phenomenally good. So, <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> That's a, Chatter put it best. Wow. <laughs> if nothing else, it does help you cast your Commander for the rest of the turn or the rest of the game. But um, gonna do a lot more than that for you. Uh, remember too. That let's say I tap two legendary guys down to convoke a legendary guy out. I can, because convoke doesn't care about summoning sickness. I can then tap that guy I just cast to help cast another guy. And that could definitely get out of control, man. Like, mm. <laughs> good. 
That's a good magic card, man. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, it is not standard playable. It is absolutely the last like six cards we've looked at are not standard playable. They're from the Commander product. Um, but you could play it in Jota and Commander, or Cissé and Commander. Um, or, you know, other decks care about legendary guys. Works in uh, Radadrabic, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Convoke a bunch of legendary guys out and then sacrifice them to Bartolome, and then you, you know where I'm going with this. You get two, two guys off your Radadrabic. Things happen. Could be fun. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just how my brain works. <laughs> how does this work in Aristocrats? It actually kind of works kind of well. It makes critters what you want. You want little token guys in Aristocrats. A bunch of legends in Aristocrats. This could work, actually. I like it. <laughs> Seems like a trap. Yeah, I'm worried about that. It could be trappish in Commander because you know you get down to where you're not drawing that many cards. This card kind of doesn't do much, but as long as your Commander is attacking, it's doing something, but like the least it could possibly do. It's not doing a whole lot, <laughs> even if your Commander is attacking. So, but you get on a roll with it, baby. You can do some pretty boss stuff, I think. But it, it you know, I kind of support the idea that it's probably not as good as it seems. Is that the Macho Man Randy Savage? Is that the man who is Macho? Is his name Randy Savage? Is he wearing like a little pair of sunglasses? He's got a beard? I don't know. That's all, though. <laughs> At least for this portion of the stream and this YouTube video uh, that I'm going to cut from it. That is all for Thunder Junction spoilers. we got a lot more to talk about. I'm going to talk to Power Dragon soon about the most overrated cards in the set. Top 10 sleepers coming out. Top X cards in the set after that. And then we're going to do... Like, the deck text. There's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. <laughs> it comes to, there's so much to do in the next week or two. So, spoiler season is not the end, my friend. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And um, there's, there's so much more to talk about, dude. There's a lot to talk about over the summer, too, uh, before we get to rotation. And, of course, we got to do rotation-proof stuff. Talk about the cards that get better after rotation. All that stuff. Just stick around with the channel. we got a lot to do uh, in the coming month or two. But... Anyway, hope you did enjoy spoiler season, and thanks for joining me for it once again, everybody. It always warms my heart when I get people all through spoiler season who are like, my favorite part of spoiler season, seeing Deb do these videos. I see a lot of you guys say that, and it really brings a lot of meaning to my life. Thank you very much. But anyway, that's all I got for this one. Just check out the Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel or helping pick the first deck tech of the season, for that matter. You can do so for a buck a month. You can also like the video. That helps me out with the algorithm monster. You can subscribe to the channel. I already mentioned that, but I probably should bring it up more than once. And aside from that, you can join us over here live at twitch.tv slash svmtgdev. Link in the description if you want to follow. We got a lot of jank to play this season in the Cowboy set. But for now, that's Olski Kowalski. So I'll catch you cats over on YouTube later. I'm Dev from The Place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.